Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you all are having a great day so far. So today on my desk, I have this DeWalt 1600 amp jump starter. And when I tried to use the air compressor, the unit started to smoke. So I believe this unit has a bad pump. So with that being said, on today's video, we are going to replace the defective air pump. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Looking at the back of the unit, we have quite a few holes and we need to remove a few screws. The screws we need to remove are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. And we're also going to be removing these two screws at the bottom a little bit later. After all those screws have been removed, I would recommend to take a flat tool such as this flathead screwdriver and begin to pry at the sides so that the unit can begin to open. However, we don't want to use too much force because there are very thin wires connected across the unit. As you pry from side to side, you will begin releasing these rods here and the unit should start to come open. There are also these plastic clips at the top as well, one on the side and one on the other side. You do want to be very careful with these as they are quite flimsy and can probably break if you exert too much force. After you have removed all the screws on the unit and you have pried the sides apart, now we can gently move it apart to take a look at the inside of the unit. I recommend opening the unit from the left side so that we are able to fold it open like this. And as we can see, we need a little bit more slack so that this fully opens this way. So down here, we are going to remove these two Phillips head screws, which gives us the slack we need to open the unit a little bit more easily. So the air compressor lives behind this plastic and to remove it, we need to disengage quite a few screws. We have one, two, three, four, and five. All of those screws will need to be removed for this plastic cover to come off. After all those screws have been disengaged, the air compressor itself is attached to the plastic. So I would recommend gently moving the unit from side to side and lifting upwards. Keep in mind the hose is still connected to it as well. So we gently want to feed that hose through the hole to give us a little bit more room to move this around. And now that we have it facing us, here is the air compressor. It is held with a metal bracket with two Phillips head screws that need to be removed to pop it out of place. And at this point, if you haven't done so already, I would recommend removing the negative terminal from the battery and isolating it for safety. Now that we have removed the compressor from the housing, we do need to remove these two leads and isolate them. These leads can be removed by prying them off. This is what the connector looks like. After those two leads have been removed, now we just need to pull the hose through this plastic hole and then we're able to remove the rest of the compressor. There is also a small board here connected to the compressor. Make sure that you remove this harness first. And here we have the old compressor, which we just removed from the unit, which we are going to be replacing with this other compressor. We can see on the old compressor inside some signs of burning, whereas on the new one, thankfully it looks intact. We do not see any burning inside it. Yeah. This was smoking pretty badly. So now let's go ahead and put the new compressor into the unit. We are going to start by first routing the hose of the new compressor through the hole that we took out the old compressor's hose from. We will then connect the leads to the new compressor. They are color coded. So over here, we have this dark dot. Down here, we have this red dot. These leads simply click into place. And then we will mount it in the plastic in the same orientation from which it was released. You can realign this metal bracket and screw it into place, making sure it's secure. And we can attach this harness to the board we removed it from earlier. We will then orient the back cover where it needs to go and then put all five screws back into place. And we also want to reinstall those screws again. Now we can go ahead and reconnect the negative battery terminal and close it back up. Something you want to keep in mind when closing this back up is the cable routing. If the cables are not routed properly, then the unit will not seal properly. So what I would recommend is first make sure this cable is routed over into this corner and that the rest of the hose is sinking downwards here as well. Now, after we made sure that we reconnected the negative battery terminal, we want to make sure that the posts down here on each side are aligned, as well as the clips over at the top. Once we have ensured peg alignment on both sides, as well as clip alignment, we can go ahead and begin to squeeze both of these together on each side. Another tip is to make sure that the terminal leads go into the channels that are created for them on the sides. So for this lead, as well as the lead on the opposite side. After the entire unit has been clicked into place, we can begin installing the 11 screws in the back. All right, now that we have all the screws installed again, let's go ahead and test the air compressor. It seems to be working. So let's go over to the car and test it. So let's go ahead and test the air compressor here on the car. Let's see, we have it set to 38. And it 
works. And there you have it. Thank you all for watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And also please consider subscribing for more content like this in the future. But with that being said, it works. And it's fully functional. So thank you all for watching. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.